To start out, we have the very infamous county legislator, Gwen Johnson, from right here in the city of Poughkeepsie. So, Legislator Johnson, this is you. Good evening. I am here to give bipartisan support to Sue Serino. Sue and I both currently serve as Dutchess County legislators. I have learned to love and respect Sue. I know that she will make a great senator. That's why you clap. <laughs> it is also very important to know that Sue will be the first female senator to serve the 44th, 41st district. So, women for Serena! And then now we're very, very honored to have with us the chairman of the Town of Poughkeepsie Republican Committee, um, Libby Biscop. So I, I wouldn't consider myself infamous, but um, I am a Republican woman. I'm a mom, I'm a teacher. You're just famous. Yeah, right. And um, I think that uh, when Sue gets elected to senator, we should have a cruise ship to bring her up to Albany. What do you say? Yeah. Uh, this is a bipartisan event, and I think that's great. Um, this is not about Republican, Democrat, what's left, what's to the right. It's about what's right. Yes. And we need to send Sue Woo. Serino to the Senate. I wish her all the best. And now we'd like to hear from the Putnam County Executive, Mary Ellen O'Dell. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's, it's a pleasure always to be here in beautiful Dutchess County. Uh, just a little bit of the background of myself, I and Sue have a lot in common, and I was a legislator, served on, a, on the legislative board in Putnam County for five years, and that's where I, they tell me I gained my chops. I tell them it's really about being up all night with a sick baby and having to go to work the next day, and, uh, and then go in and fulfill my duties as a volunteer and as a legislator. I think that uh, for Putnam County, this is a very, a very dynamic time for us. Not only do we have the opportunity to have a female representative in Albany representing Putnam County interests and all the women in Putnam County, I'm looking forward to serving uh, with a woman who definitely shares the values that the people in Putnam County share with all of us and all of our friends and neighbors in the Hudson Valley region. I think since the um, economy in 2008, one thing we've understood is that it was time to drop all of our silos and work together. And certainly I enjoy the relationship I have with County Executive Astorino, who equally is supportive of, of Sue's uh, campaign and will look forward to working with her in Albany as well as Governor, I'm, I'm quite sure. And um, we also understand that without collaboration and partnership, we're really not going to find our way out of this, out of this mess, if you will. Um, what I am hoping and envisioning for Sue is uh, a clear victory for her in November. I'm confident that she will take with her all of the leadership skills that she's developed through her business community and certainly she'll take her compassion that she brings as a mom and as a friend and as a leader. And I'm really very honored to stand here and say that I am with Sue. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm so happy to see everyone here tonight. The women leaders of our community and uh, men too, of course. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. And usually I keep things short and sweet, but tonight I want to talk about my platform. So I have information in here that, um, so I'm going to read from part of a script, if you don't mind. You know, usually I do get up and say it's short and sweet, but tonight's going to be a little bit longer, so just bear with me. Um, and you know, as many of you know, I grew up in Dutchess County and I was a young single mom for a period of time. So I know how the, the struggles that the young people are going through today. And I, I feel I have my finger on the pulse of the community. And that's why I'm looking forward to being your senator and being able to help the people that are struggling. And as Mary Ellen said, since 2008, it has been a struggle. 
um, and is it for my career as a town councilwoman, I had voted no against a major tax increase, voting against what my party wishes were when they tried to get me to vote with them. And it was the same thing with the energy tax that I voted no for, and it was not just not the right thing to do. Our community is suffering, so thank you very much. Um, and, you know, and that's why the reason I voted no, the reason why I'm bringing my tax record up this morning, this evening, is because every time I had to make a choice as an elected official, I think of that single mom out there. You know, she's sitting at her kitchen table and worrying how she's going to pay her bills and, you know, what is she going to do for her family? You know, that's real life, what's going on right now. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about the war that is being waged against women in New York State. When Shelley Silver used taxpayer dollars to cover up sexual abuse and harassment in Albany, not only did Terry Gibson stand silent, he also blocked the portion of the women's equality agenda that would protect the young women that were tormented and mistreated by the Albany machine. Albany is pitting women against each other, using political posturing and rhetoric to create so much noise and confusion that we forget what the real mission here is, that, and that there's to make sure that all women in New York State are protected, healthy, safe, and have access to all of the opportunities that they deserve. My plan includes strengthening laws that require equal pay for equal work. Women in New York earn 80 <laughs> Yes, it is, Renata. Women in New York earn 84% of what men earn, and jobs traditionally held by women pay significantly less than jobs predominantly employing men. And the wage gap is more severe for African American and Hispanic women who earn 79% and 64% of that earned by non-Hispanic men in New York State, respectively. We need to close a loophole in New York's equal pay law that allows employers to justify paying female employees less. Next, ending sexual harassment on the job for every employee. Sexual harassment disproportionately affects women in the workplace. In 2011, women filed 75% of all sexual harassment complaints filed with the New York State Division of Human Rights. That's amazing. This plan will allow for attorney's fees in employment, credit, and housing sex discrimination cases. New York State is one of the nine states that does not already allow successful discrimination defendants to recover their attorney fees. And then there's ending familial status discrimination. State law protects against familial status discrimination in housing and credit, but not employment. Women with children are less likely to be recommended for hire and promotion and more likely to receive less salary than similarly situated men. And on an average, women loses $434,000 over a 40-year career due to the motherhood penalty. I will fight tirelessly to outlaw this plan. I will work to end discrimination in housing based on domestic violence status and source of income. Women are disproportionately affected by intimate partner violence and with more than one in three women experiencing rape, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime. Nationally, 11% of evic evictions involve victims of domestic violence who are evicted due to abuse. My plan will prohibit building owners, managers, and leasing agents from refusing to lease or sell or evicting a tenant because of their status as a domestic violence victim, and create a task force to study the impact of discrimination based on source of income in housing, in particular discrimination against tenants receiving Section 8 assistance with focus on any sex-based impact. We should also work to ensure that victims of domestic violence are not punished for violating their own order of protection. Regarding domestic violence, my plan includes a pilot program for remote access to orders of protection. In order for a victim to obtain a court order to protect them from someone who harms or threatens to harm them, or their family, also known as an order of protection, he or she must testify in front of their abuser in court. Can you imagine that? So my plan will authorize the creation of a pilot program to allow domestic violence victims to testify remotely. Next, strengthening laws against human trafficking. And I know that's kind of shocking. A lot of people don't know the problem that we really do have a huge problem with human trafficking in Dutchess County, and I was quite shocked to find out about it myself. 
Um, so I know that this issue plagues Dutchess County and because trafficking is often committed behind closed doors, statistics are hard to come by. Whether trafficked into labor or prostitution, st um, sorry, women and girls who constitute the vast majority of the victims are profoundly harmed by this brutal crime. We need to pass legislation that offers better protection to survivors of human trafficking especially minors, by treating survivors as victims and increasing penalties to pu punish offenders, by creating an affirmative defense to a prostitution charge that the individual was a trafficking victim, increasing penalties across the board for human trafficking and labor trafficking, creating new offenses in increasing degrees of aggravated patronizing a minor, and creating a civil action for victims of trafficking against their perpetrators. Next, ending pregnancy discrimination. Despite our nation's civil rights law, workplace discrimination against pregnant women is on the rise, posing a significant threat to family economic security. Pregnant women, especially low-wage women in physically demanding jobs, frequently get pushed out of their jobs or must take unpaid leave when they request a modest temporary accommodation, like a stool to sit on or more uh, frequent restroom breaks, or temporary relief from heavy lifting. My plan will require employers to provide reasonable accommodation to pregnant workers. And I'm almost done. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> the, the final point of my plan stems from when I was a young single mother, working two jobs to keep food on the table, and that's a tax care credit for child care for low to middle class families. According to the Pew Research Center, New York State is the most expensive state in the country for full-time care in a legally operating child care center. For four-year-olds, it's $12,355 annually, and school-aged children, $11,690 annually. New York State is the second most expensive state for infant daycare. They pay $14,939 a year. For a single mother in New York, the cost of care was greater than 57% of their incomes. St staggering statistics. All of these items are very important, and it's going to take getting the right person to Albany to get it done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for your support, and I look forward to, uh, sorry, representing each and every one of you in 2014. I'm not used to reading from the script. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I, I uh, really appreciate all of your friendship and support. Thanks again.